Why do people gossip? What does gossip have in common with destroying reputation and aggression? Who does this and why? Let's start with Maslow's need hierarchy. Men and women have different strategies when it comes to aggression because they have different physical strength. If you are familiar with Maslow's need hierarchy, you will know that the pyramid starts at the base with physical needs, physical safety needs, social safety needs, esteem needs, the ego, and self-actualization at the top. Because a person needs physical safety to survive, the second and third level needs to be met first. Nonetheless, let's start with the first security level. Take for an example a tall, broad-shouldered man. He's trained and strong. His simplest security solution is solved by physics with his weight. The last resort for him is to lay on top of a smaller person to incapacitate them. Unless the man is short and lightweight with no fighting skills, this man will have a hard time defending himself in a dark alley from one larger man trying to rob him. In contrast to the stronger man, this man needs a different strategy to survive. His anxiety needs to be elevated. Why do I say he needs elevated anxiety? Because anxiety is a feedback loop that keeps people alive. So what would be an alternative solution for this less muscular, smaller man in life to survive? He could have a large muscular male friend that he always travels with unless he is alone and then he needs to stay away from dangerous areas and situations or carry a gun which is not legal in most countries. What about women and security? Well, women are attracted to taller men with broad shoulders and muscles, physically aggressive and dangerous to protect her if needs be. There are some women that are good at physical fighting, but they lack in weight and because of that, they will never win a physical aggressive fight due to physics and pure power. They might of course win over the light and short man with no fighting skills. But for the sake of the argument, let us presume she is physically weak as the small short man. If she cannot walk together with a taller, muscular man that can defend her, she will need another strategy. Her anxiety needs to inform her when she is in danger so she can take corrective actions to reduce the anxiety. That can mean not going out into a dark alley where she hears male voices and there is no lights there. It would be an increased risk for her to do that. Of course, these men could be playing chess with night vision goggles in the dark alley with tweed jackets and being massaged by their wives. But it is highly unlikely would you not agree? Because some men and women are physically weaker than some other men and women, they need a different strategy for the second security need. Protection from police 24-7 or physically strong male friends or women or carry a gun or knife to protect themselves. Once the second level of Maslow's hierarchy is established, the person would move up to social safety. For us to understand the basics of social safety, we need to understand the sexual reproductive strategies of women and men. Men, more than women, prefer attractive young mates. And women, more than men, prefer older mates with good finances or financial prospects. Cross-culturally, both sexes have mates closer to their own ages as gender equality Increases. The study was done in 45 countries with a sample of 14,399 individuals. Knowing this, we now look how this affects the third level of Maslow's hierarchy of social security. Social security connects to social status. Social status is important to women when they choose a male partner to have a family with. So men have to adjust to women's level of social status and their requirements of financial prospects in the man. Because women seek men with money or the potential to gather money, a man needs a job to make money or needs to run a business with others. He first needs a good reputation to be trustworthy, reputation of delivering on time and with high quality. If he does not deliver that, his potential to sign contracts to sell his products or services are limited to non-existing. You can now see how reputation is one of the most important things both for women and men because it connects to survival. 
We can see the connection to the Hexaco model in the sixth personality trait of honesty and humility. People with good reputations are people we trust and that we find humble. The opposite is not something we would have around since we do not know what the impact is from their actions. If they are dishonest, they might drag you into criminal activities without your knowledge. That is detrimental to both Maslow's second level of physical security, but also to the third level of social security. But what does all this has to do with gossip, reputation, destruction and aggression? We have so far only talked about physical aggression, now we're going to talk about indirect aggression. Indirect aggression is also known as female aggression. For women to survive when not physically strong, they need to find a better strategy. That strategy is destroying someone's reputation without the target person knowing who did it. There are, of course, not only women that relies on indirect aggression. Female personalities are high in agreeableness and anxiety. There are men that have the same profile as well. Remember how I described how human uses anxiety as feedback to potential danger? Well, there are also men that have that personality profile. They also use indirect aggression to their advantage. We also need to understand the legal implication of these two types of aggression. Physical aggression is dangerous and can lead to incarceration. But indirect aggression is only limited to the legal term slander, but only if you get caught doing it. This has been observed in young girls in school. It usually starts around 11 years of age. They change out friends, talk behind each other's backs. Some even fabricate information about their friends. Throughout their school years, they learn what is socially acceptable. They also learn what honesty and humility is in order to keep their social status in the hierarchy. Some scientists state that the onset of this behavior starts as early as six years of age. Indirect aggression has also been observed in remote tribes in the Indonesian jungle. When a husband has been unfaithful, the wife starts singing songs with the other women about how worthless the husband is, singing the song throughout the village. In some cases, the wife hires a relative to murder him. In both cases, it is not the wife that is exposed to potential harm from the husband because she diverts attention to all the women to disguise the true source. In the Western world, this happens on social media and by the coffee machine in the office through accidental dropping innocent information about the person they want to hurt, and then retracting it immediately afterwards to sound more honest and humble and innocent. The damage is still done. The priming or anchoring has already taken place, and a person that is primed or anchored with the information will not easily change their opinion. So why do people try and sound humble when trying to destroy another person's reputation? Well, it turns out humans distrust people that are directly and openly harsh. It is also important to know the male and female biases towards the two sexes. Men and women see women as victims. Men and women see men as perpetrators. Listen to these two examples and feel the difference and which one you accept. One, Elsa sold me out in the meeting with the boss. He's an evil person. Two, Elsa sold me out in the meeting with the boss. But her life is tough at home and she had to struggle to get where she is today. I bet you feel empathy for the second description about what happened and that you would dislike whoever said the first version. But it also depends on if the one saying this to you is a woman or a man. Coming back to the third level of social security. Social security is to pay attention to your reputation online and in amongst your friends and relationships. Without it, you have only physical security. If you are not tall, strong and have the weight to back it up, you need to pay more attention to social security to survive. If you live in a world where the only security you have is your reputation and you know how hard you worked for it, you will be more protective of it. Some well-established people in the world have paid a lot of money getting rid of information on the web about them to protect the third level of social security. They also know how to destroy someone by planting negative stories in social media or through the news to reduce the social status of that person. 
Why do people try and hurt others through reputation destruction? By gossiping and planting lies on social media or through established media? Well, it all comes down to emotions and certain psychological parasitic personalities. If you remember from the video about emotions, I will link to it in the description down below. If you have a person angry, depending on their personality or personality disorder, they might hurt you through revenge. The very baseline is that when you anger someone, they will at least give you passive aggressive behavior back. Being aggressive in one way or the other at the perpetrator works as a release mechanism in the body and mind, an outlet. If it is a person you angered, Passive aggressiveness is the most likely scenario. If you anger a narcissist behind closed doors, they will not seek revenge. If you do it in public or in a meeting, they will seek revenge. If you anger a psychopath in public, they seek direct revenge towards you immediately. Revenge does not seem to be done by Machiavellian personality disorders. You also need to know that psychopaths are greedy and if you stand in their way, they will most likely get rid of what is hindering them from getting that money. Machiavellians deceive you to sell you things for social status and or money to survive. Sadism is also connected to these disorder, so you know what to expect. The benefits of you knowing all this is that you now know why people gossip. You know their mental dysfunctions if they seek revenge. You know how easy it is to get targeted at the office by someone with a mental disorder that you know nothing about. You now know how they do it. I hope this information was helpful to you in your everyday life. Please like and subscribe and watch this next video to know how you know you hired the wrong person. Thank you for watching. Now we'll hopefully see you in the next one.